I think if I could, I could summarize it just a few points. Um, I'm very excited uh, for autoimmune hepatitis in the upcoming years because we do have a number of industry partners that are very interested in this disease. And I think for your audience, when what is important to highlight is the standard of care that we've been using for almost 70 years really has not evolved. And in fact, very much we have used azathioprine or imuran as a hammer and the patients as a nail. So I think we are now doing studies to look at alternative strategies and in, in, in maybe embracing the idea of widening standard of care, uh, particularly with the advent of the Camaro trial from last year and a little bit more acceptance to use other agents like mycophenolate mofetil. But I have to be honest, even in those therapies, we'll still see not meeting biochemical response, meaning complete normalization of AST, ALT, and IgG at a year in maybe 30 to 40% of patients. More concerningly is corticosteroids are still heavily used at no matter time point beyond disease diagnosis, up to 30% of patients are remaining on significant corticosteroids. This includes budesonate, but also prednisone. So I think anything we can do to herald in a new wave of, uh, of clinical trials and how we design those trials to, again, not suffer from what we've seen in the PBC space, but also to identify agents and test them in a way to get full approval uh, would be tremendously impactful for the autoimmune hepatitis patient populations. I will say beyond that, um, we've been pushing a lot more than potentially leveraging uh, how do you optimize standard of care while we're waiting. And I think there is some data suggest that as we look at utilization of azathioprine upfront, that checking thiopurine metabolites uh, has now a little bit more solid data and getting a thiopurine metabolite level or a 6TGN level of more than uh, 222 really relates to better overall treatment outcomes and normalization based on AST, ALT and normalization of IgG. So I think we'll learn more about this, but again, there's still tremendous unmet needs. Um, outside of that, you know, it's really follow-up and fibrosis progression. And I think other data suggests that we can utilize things like fiber scan in patients with autoimmune hepatitis. And actually there may be a cutoff of, of a stiffness of 8.5. That in fact, that after six months of treatment or six months of diagnosis, this cutoff can actually be very predictive in terms of not only liver related outcomes in terms of transplant or death related to AIH, but also the development of fibrosis independent of biochemical remission. So more to come on this area and again, an exciting area, but we just need so much more collaboration and patient level data. I think this will help guide us into the future and hopefully autoimmune hepatitis will catch up with all the other autoimmune diseases. Um, in terms of treatment and more individualized level of care.